to Tim Connolly Drums. I'm in between students teaching at the music school that I teach at. I don't have a student right now, so I thought I would take this opportunity to address the haters. <laughs> now, I put a video out. I put a bunch of videos out. They're actually doing really well, and it's great. And I'm loving all the comments, and the videos are doing well. I'm getting lots of views. Terrific. This is what we want as YouTubers. But there's a con constant comment that keeps coming up that I really feel I need to address. I mean, obviously, I I've been getting hundreds and hundreds of comments, and I, I actually do appreciate them, but I need to talk about some things. There seems to be a misunderstanding with my video about how there's no money in music in Ontario. And as I'm finding out from the comments, there's no music and money anywhere, apparently. I need to explain something about that, then I'm going to address the haters. What I was talking about specifically in that video was more in the lower end scene, meaning the bar scene. The almost the entire bar scene really most bars in toronto specifically don't really pay that much even the higher end bars um i can remember again i don't name places bands i don't name things in my videos i try to avoid that because i don't need any problems with any of these <laughs> venues but there was a one particular venue that was the echelon you get this gig in toronto in the cover band scene you have made it this is the big time for bands in toronto and i was working so hard years ago to get to this level i would go to these venues and i would see these bands playing and they were great bands a lot of really great bands playing at this particular venue and there was about five of them scattered throughout toronto and a couple in mississauga and you had to have a specific agent to get these venues. So not only, you know, you want to get in this venue, but you got to get this agent. And again, I'm, I don't name names, but you got to get this agent because he's the guy that books and you cannot get into this venue any other way than booking through this agent. So struggling, 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 trying to get into this venue kept working doing every bar imaginable getting our name out there working working playing sucking it up then finally we get an invite from this agent the golden agent to come to a club to do a showcase now for those of you that don't know what a showcase is four or five bands show up and play for various agents, not just the golden agent, but other agents as well. And they'll see if they want to take you on. If your band is good, then they'll take you on and they start booking you. But the golden agent was the one we were targeting. A lot of the other agents that showed up that particular night of the showcase, we were already working with, they were already familiar with us, to be totally honest. Now, of course, agents talk. And it, 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 the reason we got this invite was because the agents that we did have told the golden agent you need to see this band okay so we show up we play turns out he likes us there was a few little things that he said you need to do this you need to do that blah 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 but it was all little stuff for the most part the golden agent liked us and decided to take us on unbelievable we've reached the pinnacle he then promptly puts us into those bars that were the forbidden fruit previously so we get in there we play but we found out very quickly that it wasn't any different really than anywhere else we were playing the money wasn't that much better it was a little bit better but the scene of those clubs wasn't really that much different than the other scene that we were already playing in, which was virtually every type of bar imaginable in the GTA, the greater Toronto area. And so we get into these high-end gigs. We kept the high-end gigs, obviously. They're called high-end gigs, but really, 
it's almost like um, it was so elusive and then we got it and it wasn't that great. <laughs> it was okay, I'm not complaining about the gigs, but nothing really changed. Like I said, a little bit more money, got treated terribly by management and, and a lot of the staff in these places. Oh my God, ah, that part of it was no fun. But I just wanted to let you know about that. Now we're gonna deal with the haters, okay. So to clarify what I was talking about in my video about Ontario not paying, I was talking about lower end gigs. Hotel gigs, bar gigs, restaurant gigs, that sort of thing. That's what I was talking about. There is no money in that. That's a fact. I don't care what anybody says. There is no money. Now, you have to understand, 40 years of professional playing. I'm almost 60 years old. I've been playing since I was 14, actually, was my first live professional paid gig. But in terms of really starting to play and being you know, very active in the music scene, we're talking 1985. So from 1985 right up till now, I have been in and performing all over. I played thousands and thousands of gigs. In that time period, I was in it for all the right reasons. I played every gig imaginable. I played every type of venue. I played a wide variety of styles, and it was always catered to the audience. Most of the bands I played in were bands that wanted to get the ladies up dancing. Now, what all you haters keep saying is, you're in it, music is only a hobby, no one should ever do it for a career. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, that's total BS. Any artist, any musician, any dancer, any actor, anyone that's ever been in this field where you're putting yourself out on a stage and you're performing absolutely knows. I got kids walking by from the music camp. <laughs> they absolutely know that you've got to put your heart and soul into it. It's not about the money. When I was coming up in the business, it was not about the money. It was I'll take a gig anywhere with anybody. I don't care. I want to be on stage. So don't give me this crap that I'm getting from the haters out there about how uh, unless your heart's in it, you shouldn't do it for the money. You should work for free. Bullshit. Try telling that to an electrician or a plumber that he's going to show up at your house. He's going to replumb your entire freaking bathrooms. And then you're going to say, yeah, you should love plumbing. You should just do that for free. Or... <clears throat> I'll tell everybody about you so you'll get exposure and you won't get paid. That's all a bunch of crap. And the haters out there that are putting comments on my channel and every other channel that it has a musician doing what I'm doing, they're all saying the same thing about how it should just be a hobby. Now, it's too late for me. This is what I keep telling people. I've been doing this for 40 years. It's too late for me. Stop telling me it's a hobby. I've been doing this professionally my entire life. And as a result, I've succeeded. I didn't necessarily make it to the big time. I didn't play any huge bands, nothing like that. I did tour with some semi, you know, bands that had some fame. And I did play with some amazing musicians over the years of being a musician. I played with some of the best musicians in the Toronto area and had some great great times on stage and of course i wasn't in the heat of the moment of being on stage you're not thinking about the money but when you leave the gig and the money's in your pocket and then you get a text from the gas company saying you owe them 200 bucks then the money becomes important so if you're trying to make a living as a musician i wasn't trying to discourage anybody and the haters can stop discouraging people in my comments go for where your heart is you can make a living doing anything in this world. Go for where your heart is. Now, a lot of people say you need a backup plan. I do agree with that, and I've always had a backup plan. But the backup plan is related to music, because music has always been my life and my love, my passion. If you can, another comment I get is, if you can do what you love, it's not a job. Well, that's true. So I'm doing what I love. So I teach. That's what I'm doing right here today. I'm on a break, but I teach. I also coach bands. 
So people, bands hire me to come in and get their act together, make sure the bass player's playing what he should be playing with the drummer, and I coach them, and I tell them what to wear, and I've been playing, I've played in hundreds and hundreds of bands. So as a result, people trust me to come in and give my opinion, and they pay me to do that. The other thing I do is um, I do clinics. I do drum clinics. I don't do a lot, but I do do drum clinics, and I get paid. People pay to come and see me play and talk about music and drumming. Fantastic. I make money off YouTube. I make money off selling merchandise off my YouTube channel. I make money teaching drum core or drum line. So I specialize in hand technique and rudiment. It's all over my channel. You can see it. I studied with some of the greatest drummers in the world. And now I take what I learn from them and I always, always, always give them, pay them their dues and homage. I had some great teachers and I always talk about them because they shaped me. And this is how I make money. There's other ways I also make money. I judge competitions, music competitions. And people say music isn't a competition. I do agree, but I get paid to judge um, not necessarily judge in the sense that first, second, third place, even though I do do that, but judge in the sense that there'll be a competition and I just give them advice. So they'll get up, they'll perform, there might be 10 of them, and each one of them perform and I give them positives in reinforcement about what they're doing. I don't drag them down like the haters to the pits of hell, quit, give up on music, put those sticks down and never come back. No. The opposite, the opposite. I praise them and I say, look, man, I love what you did in that chorus section, but here's a slightly, let me give you a tip on a slightly better way to do it. You know, go to the bell of that symbol, give it the Bon Jovi bell, you know, that sort of thing. So I give them positive criticism and reinforcement. Listen, this world is a rough place. This world's a terrible place. Everybody thinks they're a know-it-all. Everybody's got an opinion. I get it. I get it. But for you guys out there that are dragging musicians down saying art is dead, it's not dead. It's only dead if it's dead in your soul. The art and music and my love for and passion for drumming is alive and well. When I teach people drums, they feel my excitement. They feel my enjoyment. I don't tell them terrible stories of all the things that have happened to me as a musician and how much I hated dragging that drum kit up 10 flights of stairs in the middle of winter on metal staircase on a metal staircase in minus 30 true story <laughs> i'll tell that story another time but i don't get into that with my students it's, i try to give them the positive the other thing is if you look at my channel has over 500 videos almost all of them are positive about music and drumming the last five videos you're gonna laugh my last five videos have been doom and gloom I'm telling you the realities of being a music side from the dark side, you know, drugged and almost robbed. My story about, um, you know, how mus the music industry has falled, uh, failed us all, and, in the, and modern music stinks and all that. All, all those negative videos are actually doing really well, and they're right now currently my most successful videos. So I'm giving you guys a different perspective and I'm trying something new. And again, I'm trying to grow my channel. I'm trying to make money in an alternative way than just playing. Now I still play, but I only play gigs where I know it's going to be worthwhile for me, where the load in is easy, the load out is easy. The band that I'm playing with are great musicians. The band manager and or the band leader or both are great guys and I enjoy working with them. I still want to have fun. I like to get paid because I paid my dues. Thousands of gigs, thousands of venues, toured all over North America, Caribbean. I have paid my dues. I just want to make a few bucks doing what I do love. I didn't say that in my other videos, but I love playing. I love being on stage. The stage is my home. It's a passion. It's in my soul. It's in my heart. When I'm on stage, I'm not thinking about those bills. But like I said, once you're done and the uh, rent collector and the mortgage companies come a-calling, 
you hope better have hoped that you got paid decently on your gig to be able to afford a decent life. Now, I, I live a decent life. I live in a nice home. I own my own home. I own my own car. Paid off. House isn't paid off. I have a mortgage. But Toronto area living is extremely expensive. That's another reason. You want to do what you love, but you want to get paid because Toronto is so freaking expensive. It's impossible. Now, do I have an auxiliary job? No. Music is my job. And like I said, I do well. I own my own music school out of my house. I'm the only per employee. It's just me. But Tim Conley Drums is successful. I have 50 students between the music school I teach at and my home. And I make decent money. I can't complain about teaching. So for those of you out there that are on the fence, there was a guy that messaged me, commented, his son's in music school. And he actually said to me, should my son quit? No. If you're watching, if the guy that sent me that comment, I can't remember his name, but if you're watching, don't quit. Sadly, Mohawk College and McMaster University are both shutting down their music programs because nowadays they're just not making money off the music program. It is true that music now is difficult to make a living at. However, as Don Familero would say to me, find other ways. So digital, yeah, uh, producing, producing your own music and getting it out. We have to, it's, it's not so much about live music anymore. Teaching is definitely an avenue. I'm thriving teaching. And the music school that I work at has had a massive influx of people interested in drumming, which I'm thrilled about because I love to teach. And the other teachers here at the school, they're fantastic musicians as well. We're all brothers. If you're a musician out there, we are all brothers. Let's try and create a more happy environment. I know that I'm giving you the doom and gloom, but I'm giving you both sides. In one video, I'm telling you not to give up. In the next video, I'm not saying quit. I'm just giving you the realities of, hey man, if you're playing in bars in Toronto, Maybe you should have a secondary job because you're going to have a hard time making a living playing bars, which is why I don't play bars anymore. Hence my Toronto, I quit the scene video. I quit the bar scene. I still play tribute band gigs. And if I happen to get invited to play, mainly subbing because I don't actually play in a ticketed um, venue band, but if I get called a sub, which I occasionally do, I'll take it. Now, what if I get called? What if somebody said, what if the Eagles came to a bar and were playing? Now, obviously, I'm not going to get called for that gig. But how much would the bar pay the Eagles? Well, let's be honest. If the Eagles came to a bar, they're going to be making money. Even if only 100 people show up, they're going to be charging those people an arm and a leg to come and see the Eagles. Now, I know that Prince, when he would come to any major city, he would always pick one small little bar venue, show up, he would contact the bar and say, hey, can I come and play? It's Prince. Of course, they're going to say yes. He would not advertise. He would not nothing. He would do nothing. He would just show up, set his gear up, walk out on stage with his band and play. Can you imagine you're eating in a restaurant and freaking Prince shows up on the stage? Mind blowing. Now, Prince can do that because, well, rest in peace, Prince, but he's Prince. He's massive. Regular artists that are just trying to make a living, well, you can't do that. <laughs> You're not Prince. You're not Don Henley. So anyways, to you haters out there, the point that I was trying to make is, yes, I still make a living. No, I'm not giving up on music. I'm too old. This is my career, and I'm going to do this till I die. Musicians really never retire. We, It's in our soul. You don't just tear your heart out and it's over. It's not like that. Music is in the soul. This bullshit about pl play for no money, though, I totally disagree. Like I said, electricians, plumbers, they don't show up at your house and do work and not get compensated. Musicians out there, fight for your right to party. <laughs> but when I say party, I'm talking about getting money for your services. Like I said, I played with some amazing musicians. The amount of time and effort that goes into developing your skills to a high level you need to be compensated for. All right, so that is the end of my video here today. Thanks very much for tuning in. Keep watching. 
Uh, oh, I, one more thing. I want to apologize for that video that I put out where the microphone was monkeyed. As you can see, the microphone is quite close to me, and it shouldn't be a problem on this video. You should be able to hear everything. When I did that other video, I put the microphone down too low. When I was editing it, it sounded okay. But I keep getting people commenting that the microphone isn't working properly, and I really want to apologize for that. I didn't realize it because, like I said, when I edited it, it sounded okay. So something must have happened in the upload process. And I don't really watch my videos once I put them up. might watch them once. If I don't really watch them, I just put them up and let you guys watch them. So anyways, thanks very much for joining me. And as always, keep drumming. See ya.